part two of the trip. Part two of the trip has now begun. So after a day of much less hectic travel, I get to finish it off with back. And I know I've been saying, don't let me do a back day. My back's overdeveloped. I want to build my chest. I want to build my arms. I want to build my legs. Chest and shoulders need to get on the back burner. I'm going to do a little. I still like doing a little because I'm really not in the mood to just do forearms right now. Like the days where I have just the forearm only lift, those are very chill. Those are very kind of just, I mean, it really feels like accessory work, almost like I'm doing just a rest day, which is fine, but I don't really want to do it today. So I'm going to make today back and maybe, maybe some other something or others in between. Might add some forearms still. There's a little bit of potential for some rear delts. Half of it is I'm kind of just gonna, you know, get in there and see. I know back is gonna be done, but since today is kind of a gap day in my routine, legs are a staple. Those are never skipped, never changed. Same with chest, same with arms. But right now, since I kind of have back teetering, you know, let's, uh, I'd say in terms of all the muscles that I'm hitting right now, chest is on the fucking skillet, ripping hot. I got to give it some attention. Legs are in the oven. Don't want it to fucking overcook. You know, that's taking my, uh, that's taking some thought processes. And arms are, uh, they've been, they've been putting the fridge to thaw, but back, back is in, back's in the slow cooker. Back's in the crock pot right now. Doesn't need that much attention, but I still want to give it some, make sure nothing's going wrong. And really, <laughs> I'm just trying to justify that I want to get a back pump. So that's the plan. That is the freaking plan. Pull downs, rows of a couple varieties, and that'll really be it. I mean, I don't have to sit here and absolutely destroy it because I still do want to save most of my, let's, uh, you know, almost consider them recovery points for my you know, weaker body parts. But if you're bulking up, I mean, come on, you're gonna be gaining weight across your frame anyway. So we're uh, just about two months deep. The initial phase of like very rapid weight gain from you know just starting a surplus has now ended and it's a very slow climb. It's a slow climb, but it's one that you cannot slow down on. Because even though the end results are going to slow down, you're kind of just going to taper off to a slow gain. The amount of effort that you have to, you know, actually put into getting all the food down doesn't change. You know, that's not going to change for anybody. So if you're a, if you're a little bit of a hard eater in a way, like I don't think there's such thing as a hard gainer. There's definitely such thing as a hard eater. You've got to treat like training. So plan to get when I get back home. Rice packets, ground beef and or sunny side up eggs. That's a potential. And then I'm not sure what else, but I'll add a, I'll actually add some end of lift meal chat. I need to, I need to add more of that because it's a really big part of this. I mean, like the training, you're not, you're not gonna get big without training, of course, but if you're not actually fucking chowing down on the regular, you can't really expect much size gain. I mean, that's, and I, I don't, in no way should you ever listen to anybody try to sugarcoat that. Like, oh, well, no, you can, you can still gain weight on a deficit. You can still gain muscle if you're, if you're losing body fat. The same guy is gonna flip around and guess what he's selling? Guess how he really fucking makes his living? Yeah, selling fucking snake oil, you know? So listen to the guys that have been there. Listen to the guys that know how to chow down on 7,000 calories on the regular. And that's not me. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a reasonable appetite, but seven on the regular? That's above my pay grade. Though, not above what I foresee my, uh, let's just say, path on the corporate ladder of lifting to be. Right? I think eventually some 7,000 calorie days are gonna make sense, but not yet. Definitely not fucking yet. So let's uh, let's go get in this fucking anytime and 
get this shit started. Presumably, presumably, we pull downs. Start with some bent over cable rows. Now there are dumbbells here and they are reasonably heavy, but I'd rather do the cable just for the, it's hard to even describe this. I feel like I need a fucking force meter, but if you sit here with a dumbbell and you're doing regular speed reps, the amount of actual like squeezing and tension that you're doing to lift the weight, I feel like unless you're doing crazy slow reps, you kind of get a little bit of leeway at the top because you pull the weight, it's moving, and now you're kind of riding its momentum, which I mean, if you do really slow, like a holding rep would be different, but the cable is just so much more constant. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if I had a cable where it was uh, like a push down, I could pull it really fast and launch the weight into the air. But with something like this, no chance. I mean, you're accelerating at a uh, four times slower, if you know anything about cables. But uh, either way, a good squeeze. That's what I'm going for. Left side first. One more, a little heavier. And this is kind of hard to explain because unless you can feel it, it's like, uh, I mean, it's like telling someone to just pop their pecs. It's kind of a skill. It's not just something you can innately do. But the kind of squeezing that I'm getting in my lower lat on something like this, prime. Very nice. But let's run it up. Let's run it up. This will be an alternating set. Five left, five right, five left, five right. Kind of evenly fatigue my back. And maybe I've just go, maybe I've just got a little OCD with the training, but it always feels kind of weird to go straight from a single side movement into a double side movement, because it's like my right side got worked 30 seconds earlier than my left side. So the left side got a little bit more stimulus, a little bit more like recovery. It's probably not a massive margin, but sometimes I like a little intermediary single arm set to kind of ease into, I don't know, pull downs or rows or whatever's next. No. <laughs> 
That's enough of those. What would you do next? If you were me, having done these three sets, think a pull down, lat focused, or a machine row, much more mid upper back focused. These are the thoughts running through my noggin, which you don't really see in between my exercise choices. Eh, I'll figure something out after I get a sip of water. No need for the stack. No need for the stack on this one. Now, I may do a try and a, I may do a try and gonna, I may do a heavier set next, but the point of this row is not my typical, like get as much tension into my back as possible approach, which I think is legit, right? I've referenced this before and it's worth talking about pretty much all the fucking time. But this is the, this is the continuum of sets, right? It extends into infinity, but this is like the realm we're working in. Now this is like your, at least I stop it at as heavy as I can go for eight reps. If I try to curl the hundreds, for one thing, it might not even do one, but let's say I pick whatever weight, I can do four reps, can't do another one, too heavy. Even for me, even for Mr. Sam. Now if I could do a weight for eight reps, I think that's within the realm of being a positive progressive gains inducing set but you know be mindful eight rep curls like to failure it's a little freaky but so you got heavy shit and then you got lighter squeezing shit and this side is where I think most of the stimulus is really just coming from really doing as much contracting as you can fucking possibly do to wrap the rep whereas something like this is going to be much nastier in this last few inches of squeezing, these last portion of like, ugh, if you get what I'm saying. And honestly, that little grunting, that's a perfect description. So the actual stretch portion, it's not so heavy. That's not where all the damage is being done. That squeezing part well, is where it really gets me. So that's the plan for this one. Light squeezing, and I wanna feel like my elbows are gonna touch each other behind my back. Like when I do a heavy set of rows, it looks more like this. I'm not gonna touch my stomach every time. But with this one, especially since it's more upper back focused, I'm trying to fucking pull the bar pretty much through my nipple line, a little below. But no more chatting. Let's throw this shit around. If I can pick a better song. Jesus, Spotify wrapped us, or uh, Spotify Discover Weekly is not hitting right now. That's her. Even 100 is too fucking heavy. Same weight, 
100 is way too fucking heavy for a squeezing set. Do something nasty next and change it up. First set was heavy, slow. Second set was light, slow. Change it up completely heavy, fast. And by fast, I mean like just higher tempo. Nothing too jerky. Let's do one more, one more. Fancy pants, upper back focus, and lat focus superset, and that'll be the end. I'm not kidding, I mean, back doesn't need too much work, especially not for me. So really, I just wanna pump it up and go home and grub on something. So this, uh, the first time I saw this move, it was in a Callum Von Moger back day. He was doing this as like a warm up, but it's kind of an interesting squeeze. It's a good way to change it up, but really I'm just using it as a pre exhausting movement before I do a set of pull downs. So, like I said, alternating between upper back ish and more lat focus. Because before I pose down, I want my whole back as pumped as it gets. If I finish with three sets of pull downs, yeah, my lats are going to be fucking like blown up. I don't want my traps to feel left out if you uh, if you follow my logic. So a couple reps here, squeezing. Doesn't even have to be the total failure. I'm just trying to get some extra blood into my, well, kind of upper lats a little. Rhomboids, traps, everything. And then some of that fatigue will transfer over. So I don't need a lot of weight over here in this pull down. All I have to do is really squeeze, big stretch, and repeat until complete. find some lighting. There we go. All right, apologies for if the audio is a little bit scuffed. The music isn't like, it's not crazy loud, but it is right above me. So every time I add like a little uh, like vocal isolator to kind of cut some of that out, makes the whole fucking session a little funky. Usually I ask for a favor. I say if we could turn it down. 
Well, there's no me in here. It's fucking 9.30 at night. But no biggie. No biggie. So back pumped after a total of one, two, three sets of cable rows. One set of machine rows. No, no. Three cable, two more light squeezing cable, one machine, and then a finishing superset, seven sets total. And then for, uh, for clarity's sake, I did do five reps of uh, 50 pound shrugs just for a little extra fucking trap activation, but nothing wild. So let's see how, let's see how the lat spread's looking. So you tell me, how's this lighting? Should I return here or find somewhere new? We'll have to find out. Well, that's a good fucking back shot. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's hard to hold a fucking back double by with a back pump. The last spread's easy. All I do is sit there. But you actually have to use your fucking traps to pull your arms up. And if they're pumped to the fucking gills, it's tricky to reach back that far. But either way, fucking back complete. Let's go eat something. Not exactly the post-workout meal, really the post-day workout meal, but back was good. But it was still kind of relatively chill enough lift that I didn't actually have any crazy soreness this morning. I mean, something like a leg day, I'm gonna feel that right away. Something like even chest too, but since I, I was kind of chilling back, I really just want to get some, I mean, really just back activation, kind of pump it up. No need for any, uh, no need for any recovery tricks. No need for a magnesium bath. No need for, no need for nothing. So this is a, uh, man, you know, now that I'm thinking, historically, steak and ramen, that's my chicken and rice. This is a, this is a pretty staple meal for me. And it's not because it's magically awesome. Now the steak, that's legit. You know, if I've got my choice between a protein shake and just really, I mean, fucking, not even just a steak, but any kind of meat, I think it really is gonna be in your best interest to actually eat something. It's just a better food. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to argue you're getting all the, every nutrient from uh, like two scoops away compared to something like this. But purely on a protein, for protein kind of scale, they're not too incomparable. I mean, uh, let me finish this bite and I'll continue. So what I mean by that is, if you've ever looked up online, and odds are you probably haven't, the only reason I have is because of all the lifting stuff, but you can pretty much look up a grading scale of all proteins. And it's an uh, it's all sort of, I mean, I'm, I'm not a uh, physiologist. I didn't look at all their studies and everything, but it's kind of an overarching quality of you know, amino acid array, absorption rates, fucking everything under the sun of all protein sources. There's this protein in everything. I mean, there's protein in the fucking loaf of bread that I got sitting over there to make like a turkey sandwich for later, but that's probably not the best. So zero to a hundred, that's kind of the scale, you know, on the lowest end, you know, upwards of the zeros to tens to twenties. I mean, that's 20% out of a hundred quality. That's where you're going to find like wheat proteins and like some vegetable proteins, like the proteins in a fucking, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like a strawberry or something like that. So minuscule, nothing crazy. It's not an awesome source. And 
I want to uh, I want to get in before. Well, have you seen how muscular a gorilla is? That guy only eats fruit all day. So I think I'm going to stick to my vegan diet, Sam. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what? For anybody who thinks that, I'm not going to discredit you. Maybe you're right. You know, send me a picture of yourself. If you are a silverback gorilla, then sure, I'm not going to dog on you for not getting your 250 grams of protein in per day. Uh, <laughs> but guess what? You're a fucking human, right? You're a goddamn homo sapien. You got opposable everything, right? You got no fur on you. It's a different breed. You know, how big is a fucking horse? All they eat is hay. Uh, the stomachs are totally different. So that's a... Uh, <laughs> That's such a cash grabby fucking argument. But zero to 100, scrap your shit in the bottom. And as you get closer to the top, that's what I'm aiming for. Those are the proteins which I'm kind of aiming for. And I've gone, uh, I've said before, like, I want the highest quality protein source possible. I'm a little lenient. You know, I'm a little lenient. I'm still going to count the protein that I get from like uh, three McDonald's singles or like a Wendy's spicy chicken, right? But. It's, as long as it's within these categories, I'm fine with it. You know, that's going to be animal products, that's going to be steaks, meats, fish, poultry. I'm not sold. I'm not sold on the fucking insects protein. I think that's a little bit too dystopian for my taste. I mean, is there a... Now I'm getting curious. Is there anybody here who's insect-pilled? You guys getting down your, uh, your dried grasshoppers and whatnot? I mean, if you got an Olympia-level build... Who knows? Maybe we should uh, maybe we should get into some of that neo uh, new future wave protein farming. But until then, I'm going to stick with steaks, eggs, milk, fish, meats of other varieties. If you're the liver king, slam some liver. If you're Joe Rogan, get some elk in your system. That's legit. And then everything else, I'm getting a little bit smarter with the carbs. So instead of just a fucking you know bag of fruit snacks. I mean, sure, it's 100 grams of carbs. It's just, you're not going to be able to do that for that long. I mean, it's going to totally crash my appetite after like three months. So eating more complex carbs, you know, things that are a little bit more kind of a whole food-ish. Loving oatmeal, loving a little fingerling small potatoes, 45 minutes in the oven, olive oil, salt, pepper, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder. I think that's the full recipe. Ends up coming out perfect. But something like the ramen, it doesn't bother me. And if you're drinking enough water like you should be, then the kind of you know higher sodium level that's in it, it shouldn't really bother you either. And the reason for that, and the reason for that should be, you need sodium in your system anyway. Dude, what's, uh, <laughs> it's like salty foods get such a bad rep, but electrolyte drinks don't. If you're really putting down water, the, the, you know, the two grams of salt or how many grams of salt I put in the steak plus the however many grams that are in this two packs of ramen. Dude, it's fucking fine. Your whole action of even like fucking contracting muscles is all kind of osmosis -y, which is all about just your electrolyte balance anyway. So I think the real problem with like overly salty foods is if you don't drink enough fluids to match. But this, this is a... Uh, oh yeah, so what I was trying to say was this is something I can eat very easily. I'm gonna have no problem getting this down. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not just gonna sit here and mukbang it. I'm gonna turn this off and then, you know, enjoy. But that's a pretty fucking crucial part of this equation. Because not only do you have to eat a crazy amount of fucking food, but you've gotta enjoy it to a certain extent or else you're just gonna get crazy fucking tired. I mean, I've had a lot of meal prep companies. They're not companies, but like meal prep services. I've tried some of their stuff. And every time it's just a plain ass chicken rice, yeesh, you know? So that's where prepping your own stuff can be a little bit better. You don't want anything to go dry. So in the, uh, in the context of bulking and actually getting food in your system, moistness is key. If you're ever sitting in front of a dry bowl of rice, you've already failed. You know, throw some barbecue sauce. If you're really concerned, throw some sugar-free barbecue sauce on there. Make that the end of it. Pound it. Take a nap. Do whatever you got to do. Come back two hours later, similar size meal, repeat. But yeah, solid back pump. I think I'm gonna end up going back there today for uh, for arms, but I'm not sure. I'll probably end up just bouncing around. But no scale, so 
I'm not going to have a weight update until about a week from now, and then we'll see. So morning weight, I better be two. I got to be in the low 260s minimum, but that'll be for us to find out then. So I will see you tomorrow for arms.